You remember Hebron's David Wilder from part one of our tour of Hebron. They're standing on a wall here which is 15 feet thick. This wall was built according to the archaeologists between 43 and 4500 years ago. We're talking about the days of Noah, flood. That's where we're standing. Right across from us is a second wall which was built 3,700 years ago during the days of Avram and Sarah. And these stairs in the middle, they're part of this original wall going back over 4,000 years. Now the really amazing thing about these stairs is that they continue up onto the street just past where this wall is. And the archaeologists think that if they dug down there, they'd find the original gates to the city of Hebron. The, the significance of this, if you think back to the biblical verses, where Abraham purchases the tomb of the patriarchs for 400 silver shekels from Ephron the Hittite, the Bible says that he signed a contract. He made that purchase at the gates to the city of Hebron. That's right here. It's amazing. This is where the first real estate transaction took place in the land of Israel by the first Jew in the first Jewish city in the land of Israel. This is it. These stone pillars inside here come from a house that was built about 2,700 years ago during the days, days of King Hezekiah. Now at that time, Hebron was used for storage. They used to store foods here for the army, grains and whatever, in these clay, clay pots. Now the clay vessels had a handle on them, and on the bottom of the handle was a seal. The seal looked like a little beetle, and on the top of it, it said in ancient Hebrew, the word Lamelech, to the king, identifying this property of the kingdom. But underneath the seal was another word identifying the storage area because there was more than one. They found here over 10 seals, which on the top say Lamelech to the king, and underneath say in ancient Hebrew the word Hebron. And when the archaeologists found those, they said if anybody had any doubts as to whether this was the authentic biblical Hebron, those doubts have all been erased. It's difficult to get closer to the roots of the Jewish people and where we are right now. This is where the Jewish people began, and this is where we are today. This basically links, bonds, Jews from the days of Abraham until now. And that's what the word Hebron means. Hebron in English means the chaber, to join together, to bond. Hebron bonds together the Jewish people throughout all of our history. We finally arrived at the heart of Hebron. The tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs we call in Hebrew Ma'arata Machpelah, the caves of Machpelah. <coughs> this is the site that we read about in the Bible that Abraham purchased to bury his wife Sarah 3,700 years ago. People ask, why did Abraham pay so much money for it? He could have had it for free if one wanted to give it to him. It would be like if today you say to me, here are the keys to a Mercedes, and I say, I don't want to take it, I want to pay you for you. They put me in an insane asylum. Abraham knew that if he didn't buy it, then one day somebody was going to say to him, you know, it really doesn't belong to you. We'll let you use it. Your poor wife who just died. That doesn't mean it belongs to you. If you want to make sure you have ownership, you sign a contract, you put money on the table, and it's yours. And he purchased this for the Jewish people for eternity. Now, why Dafka this cave? What was so important about here? It's written in the Zohar Kadosh, the Holy Zohar, that Abraham was the first person alive to ever discover the tombs of Adam and Eve, the first man and the first woman. Here, at this site, it says that he could smell the fragrances of Garden of Eden. And that's why he wanted to purchase it. Such a holy site. And that's why we call this the entrance to the Garden of Eden. Now this building that we're looking at is 2,000 years old. It was built by Herod. At the same time as he did the work on the Second Temple in Jerusalem. It's a huge structure. And of course, it covers the original caves of Machpelah that Abraham purchased. For 700 years, from the year 1267 until 1967, no Jew, nor any Christian for that matter, was allowed to go inside the structure. We were told that it was a mosque and only Muslims could pray in a mosque. So Jews, for 700 years, had to stand where this woman is sitting. There were steps that led up to the entrance on the top. And there were stairs there. Jews were allowed to go up to the seventh step, and that's as far as they would go. And anybody that tried to go further than that, was kicked, spit at, and threatened with death. And that's the way it was. Those stairs have since been destroyed and blotted out as a disgrace to the Jewish people. And only now, since we've come back, to again Jews have privilege, which is of course a right, to be able to go inside here and to pray 
David, I'd really like to go inside to pray, and it's really exciting, especially to be here with you. Can we go inside? Please. The Jewish people have a long tradition of visiting the graves of their forefathers and mothers. Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, the first holy Jews. It was a special and moving experience for me to pray in the cave of the patriarchs once again, in the city of Hebron, where King David ruled Israel for seven years before he conquered Jerusalem.